Hi and welcome to TCL. My name is David Copete. In today's video, I'll be going over this script. It is a pattern making algorithm. And what I do is I'll go over all of the steps here. And at the end, I show you how you can trim where you can extract portion of the pattern as well as adding some color like this. We can also change the number of subdivisions and create different intricate patterns that we can change just with those sliders. And then we can also change, let's say the colors and the way that they display depending on their area. So here we can change the presets. And so I'll be going over all of these steps. If you want to download the script or if you want have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I have this available on my website and I also have other tutorials and resources that can help you learn how to use parametric design. So hopefully you're excited to see how this is put together. If you're fairly new, this is going to be a good tutorial because I keep it pretty simple in the sense that we don't have a large script. We have a fairly simple amount of steps here, but you'll see actually how complex some of these patterns can get. All right, so now let's get into it and let me show you the process for creating this pattern. All right, first thing we'll bring in is going to be construct point. So we can use a parametric point and then be able to change the location. Next, we'll bring in a circle. So using the point, we'll plug into the plane here. Now let's change the radius. So I'll go here to 10. Next, we're going to subdivide this. So using a divide curve, we can take that circle and subdivide it evenly using this component, and then we can change the count. So I'll keep it simple here using real numbers. So I'll go between one less than nine. And so here we have a slider that we can change. We'll keep it here at five. Also notice that when this subdivides a circle, it does not subdivide it by keeping it vertical. It actually starts the point here and then all the way around. I would actually want it to start here at the top. So those are things that we can adjust, but keep in mind, those things will affect the pattern and its orientation. So using these points, we're now going to connect them using a line segment. Now the line segment needs to have a start and end point, this one, and we can now plug in the points for the start and the points for the end. And notice nothing's happening and that's because they are both one long list and therefore we need to graft one of them. So that way they all connect in the sense that this will be separated into groups and these will be all of the points going to every single one of those points. And we can change the amount that it happens depending on the count of the subdivision of the circle. Also notice that when we get here to the lower numbers, we don't have as much detail as we increase here. And that's obvious because we have more subdivisions. So the next step is going to be taking this information and extracting overlapping points from these curves. So let's do that. We'll go here and bring in a component called multiple curves. And what this does is it'll extract the points that are overlapping. So when you plug this in, you'll see that the information is actually grafted now. And so to fix that, we flatten the input. Notice now that not only do we have the connection between all of those points, but we also have the point where they all intersect here. And this is going to be useful because now what we're going to do is remove redundant points because 
there tends to be sometimes more than one point here, more than one point here. And so when we look at the output here, we have 1,064, but I know we don't have 1,064 points here. So to fix this, we can go here to call duplicates, and this will get rid of all of the duplicate points. And so when we look at the output, now we have 57, and that, that makes sense. This is, there's about 57 points here. And also looking at the number of subdivisions we can change. The one thing to keep in mind is the tolerance. Once the tolerance gets, let's say if this object is too small, when you have the tolerance set to a specific number, they, you start merging points together. And so that can change your pattern design. So keep in mind that the tolerance needs to be kind of low here to be able to extract the points correctly. Now we're going to move on to taking these points because we've kept it pretty simple here. We've gone from the simplified shapes, the circle, subdividing with points. Now we're going to take all of that data and subdivide those points evenly. Now, when we have all of these points and we know that we've gotten rid of the redundant ones, now we can bring in the Voronoi subdivision. Now, before I go too far with the Voronoi pattern, I want to explain that Voronoi is actually a process of subdividing areas evenly. And so this is why you see it used a lot is because it's a straightforward process, but when you use it with random points, it actually creates a very noticeable pattern and people tend to not like or to overuse it. But in this case, we have something different. We have the ability to take all of those points that are not random because we're using organized systems to create patterns like this. So as you can see, Voronoi is actually creating the geometrical patterns that we want to extract by taking all of those points and subdividing it evenly. Now you would never look at this pattern and say, wow, that's, there, that's uh, the process of Voronoi is being used here. But you can see that as we change the frequency, we change the pattern. And what we're doing is we're subdividing each and one of those points evenly. So we can see how this reacts. All right, so for this next part, this is also very critical. Let's change this back to, doesn't matter what frequency, but notice that when you use Voronoi, they'll ask the component, it's going to have a boundary input. Now we can use that, but what's happening is this pattern is actually a radial or a circular pattern. So when we use a rectangle, it's not necessarily going to work the best. So what I like to do is create our own clipping mechanism. So we don't have all of these large pieces that will get in the way once we start adding a little bit of color to the pattern. So using this, we're going to check this out, move this over and just copy this again out here. So I'm moving it, tapping alt, and it creates a copy here. Now we can change the size of this. So if I said range of three and decrease this a little bit, we are going to now use this to extract the pattern. So how do we do this? Well, we'll take that circle and turn it into a surface. So using a boundary surface, I would like to also hide the input on that one and then bring this over because using the circle and its radius, we can now bring in the next component, which is BREP curve. And where this surface or these boundaries representations are, we want to know where it overlaps with the line segments. So using this as the BREP, and the cells as the curve input. 
notice that there are some that are complete and some that are not. So this is where if I disable the preview on this, on that surface, and use this, now these, the ones that are complete, will turn into surfaces, and the ones that are not won't turn into surfaces. So using this circle, we can actually expand the pattern or contract it to extract different uh, portions of it. So let's increase the frequency. We'll just say 15. We can decrease this to change the pattern. And if you don't want to see everything, well, we can disable the preview on all of that and just focus on the portion of the pattern that you want to extract as you bring it out this way. So let's say, okay, we want to use these and you'll also notice that this is not going to necessarily work every time or it looks like it has some issues and we know the reason for that is that these bits that are not close won't have a surface so that's why it's kind of showing us in orange here and so now that we have extracted part of it let's analyze the area of each and every one of those. So when we bring in an area component, we are calculating all of the different areas. And so what I'd like to do, actually let's flatten the output on that one. So it's not dash, it's all just one long list. And now that we have the area here, we're going to deconstruct domain which is going to tell us the minimum and maximum here. So All right. And so those are going to be the start and end points numbers that we'll use for the gradients. So using the start and end for the upper and lower limit we are now here and we can take a look at bounds, which is going to tell us what is the largest and smallest number. So the smallest number is 0.1 and the largest number is 0.72. Now, if we deconstruct the domain on this one, now we'll get the start number, the smallest number, and then the biggest number. So now we need to take this, and if we divide that by two, the largest number divide that by two, that will give us the mid parameter, so we can color this evenly. Now we can change this as well, I'll show you that. But using this system of deconstructing the area, getting the minimum and maximum, using those as the limits, and then the middle of it, now we can go to a custom preview, using the gradient as a material, then we can use the surfaces as the input. So taking this, I'll disable preview, and I'll bring back just the line segments here. We can change all of the sizes as well. And also we can go here to shaded mode. I think it's easier to see. We can change that number. So if the parameter is 0.3, then we'll just do 1.0000. Be able to move this around and then use this instead. So we can kind of change the gradation of the pattern here.
and all of these parameters will update as, let's say we change the frequency. If I set 10, 15, go to 18, we can expand the pattern here. And when we look at the numbers, we'll see that we have 1.9 being the midpoint. So then we actually need to increase this to two so we can see the whole range of colors that we can create for this. Let's go to 12 and then so when there's less and the area is different, then this number needs to change. Now I've only shown you one gradient pattern. Let's go to different colors here, or even this one, where it kind of randomly sets a black and white checkers, which actually sometimes can look really cool. Let's change this to eight. Now back to 15, let's move this round. The smaller the number, the smaller the subdivisions will get colored. And as we increase the number, larger areas start to kind of emerge from the pattern. Let's go to this preset. And so that's going to conclude the portion of the tutorial that explores the pattern making and design making for patterns like this. So hopefully you learned something new. Some of these things I've gone over before, but in this one, I wanted to slow down a little bit and show you a few other tricks that um, I think will be very useful for those of you who are into pattern making. And also if you are into pattern making, there's a really cool group on Facebook that I joined and I've been obsessed with as well that has also inspired a lot of these designs. So thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you learned something new you want to download this, I'll have it available on my website. And I hope to see you on the next one.